going to explain to you how the plant is going to defend itself. The plant defends itself just like human beings. There is no difference. It has a very strong immune system. And the immune system secretes all kinds of oils. The natural thing about oils is that the oil basically mixes with air. Okay, emanates smells. So now heard about this chemical called Vodomas? Most of you know it, right? So you put it on your body and sleep, no mosquito comes near you. Why? Yeah. They want your blood, they smell the blood. Right? Now when you put Vodomas, it covers up the smell. The, the plants do the same thing. Well, how do you make the plant do it, right? That's what you want to think about. You don't want to think about how to spray something. Okay, you spray something, then the rain comes. The next day the insect comes and starts eating the plant. So what do you do? You spray again. Uh, then you spray, then the air is blowing, all the spray is gone. Now what do you do? You see, it's outright it's foolish to spray plants. So foolish, right? So whatever you can do sustainably is what you have to do. I'm going to give another analogy. Where you want to think about your digestive system, and you want to think about the plant's digestive system. Let's think like that, okay? Where do you think is the plant place? The leaf. No. Digestive system, not food preparation. I'm not talking about the kitchen of the plant. I'm talking about the digestive system of the plant. So if you want to grow a healthy human being, you give him good food, right? So here there is a small difference. If you want to grow a healthy plant, you give the soil really good stuff, really good stuff, then the plant is extremely healthy. The main reason that plants are grown in a small place is here I can grow 10,000, 50,000 seedlings in a small area and watch them. That's one reason. The first four weeks of many plants is when their genetic expression is maximum meaning that every seed has a lot of secrets in it so when the plant is growing it, ha it expresses its genetics so when you stress the plant the least during the first four weeks of its birth it's like a baby you know why babies are born in mommy's tummies it's very simple because that's the safest place this is the place where you can protect the plant, make sure that the plant is very very healthy before it goes and faces the open world. So you want to stress the plant the least. We are assistants to nature. We do observe a lot. We, we look at the sunrise time, we look at the set, sun setting time, we look at rainfall, we look at how much moisture is there in the soil, we look at the climate, we look at a few things, insect population, when it starts to ramp up then it goes down. So many things we need to observe. But other than that, we don't control things too much. But we try to do the best for the plant from seed to the final point. Several times in the last one month that I watched some of the fertility of this cow dung right here. So, the soil below, it's actually growing right on top of Kauda. So, the soil here is so good that it has grown to the maximum. Started making seed. But it's all the same Bajra seed all over the place. First of all, it's pale. It probably doesn't have any minerals that it needs. So, imagine if I grow vegetables here and give it a healthy Buddha, maybe my yield will be very less. The plant will make fruit. You want fruit from a plant like this or from a plant like that? You want like this, right? So it's very important to have soil very fertile. And plowing soil is the most dangerous thing to do. So you, you disturb the soil top three inches because you want to sow the seed. Somebody asked me a question. How do you put the seed, right? 
This is what you do? Apart from what it does is the only way it moves through soil is by eating soil. There's no other way it can move through soil. And it is converting the cow dung into a fertilizer that is most easily absorbed by the plant. So that's a vermicompost bed right behind you, right there. vermicompost that comes out of fresh cow dung. This is all worm poop. Good stuff. Already into the into the cow dung. And then you know they they the earthworms do the job of converting it into beautiful fertilizer. So from this bed we will create probably 10 beds. Fresh cow dung. Mix it with soil so the soil bacteria can also go in. And put some calcium, put some uh, azomite which is a rock mineral. Put some good stuff in it, put all, all kinds of bacteria culture into it so that you know that the worm poop the output is all poop, 100% poop of the earthworm. So uh, it, you put it in the soil, believe me, every plant I plant from the greenhouse survives. They will grow beautifully in the first three weeks. So first four, four weeks I have ensured their perfect growth inside the greenhouse. Then three more weeks I have ensured their growth using this. With, it already has calcium, it already has everything the plant needs. All the 66 minerals. Now, after 7 weeks, you have to give feeding to the soil. So you have to do all that. And after 3 or 4 years of doing this to soil, the soil becomes what you call as regenerative. Then you can talk about sustainability. It's truly sustainable. Kalyani. So I know every employee is by, by name, I have drunk tea in their house, we take, take care of them, we give them tea, we give them, today she is complaining why there is no tea for me or no drinks, they are working in the sun, so what she has been saying. So uh, we really take care of them as much as we can. They are the ones putting food on your table, so I mean they are the ones to be thanked and really taken care of. <laughs>